Uh, welcome back to the studio. We have one more guest, Arvind Chadi, who's part of the uh, Godolphin Flying Start program, is with us uh, now. He gets to rub shoulders with uh, Group 1 winning trainer Jamie Osborne, Royal Ascot winning Derby winning jockey Martin Dwyer as well. Arvin, you're keeping good company tonight, and just little old me as well. Oh, no, I'm very fortunate. I'm in a privileged position, you know, obviously, Derby winner Sir, Sir Percy and uh, almost won a Breeders' Cup. Almost. Oh, almost. almost. <laughs> so, very lucky. Almost. Arvin, you can come back any time you want. That's exactly... The glory of his life, Mr. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Does that cut, Jamie? Almost, no. nearly. Oh, I mean, that, that was a so hell of a glad you came on tonight. <laughs> Not at all. But that was, that was such a run, wasn't it? I mean, that was such a, an experience, I suspect, for all of you. It was wonderful, but you should be asking this man his questions. Never mind the toast well, of the well, York. Well, yeah, but that's, you know, he's, he's, got, he's got an appointment in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I, so can't part, I can't believe, Alvin, you were just telling us to get on the Dali Flying Start. How many, how many people apply? Um, I think it was around 1,500 people applied, and they take 12 people, uh, 12 um, young people every year. Um, this year, there's, uh, they're from all over the, from all over the world. Mm. Um, there's uh, people from the UK, Ireland, America, Australia, Argentina, Japan, um, France. Um, so we're all we're very privileged and lucky. But yeah, it's a very competitive um, uh, scholarship to attain. and. I was very thankful that I was one of the lucky ones to get chosen. So 12 from 1,500, that's not bad. So you're the creme de la creme. You're the best of the best. Uh, well, I don't know about that, but uh, maybe through the good often client start, we, we hopefully will be with the training and um, you know, personal development and horsemanship skills we all develop throughout the two years of the program. So, so what's, the, what, what's the course? What does it involve now that you're, you're in the thick of it? Um, so it's like a two-year scholarship program um, run by Goodolphin. Uh, we start off in Ireland at Langenstad. Mm -hmm. um, we get to do a variety of things like uh, we attend uh, University College Dublin to do um, like veterinary uh, modules. Uh, we get to break good off in yearlings at Kildangenstad, which is uh, you know personal highlight of mine. Um, and we're currently um, on the second phase in Dalham Hall at Newmarket. Okay. And we do uh, a few a variety of things like uh, we do like office rotation in Dalham Hall. Um, as well as we uh, ride out of the British Racing School, which has been which has been you know, interesting to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, and we also get to experience all the great um, organisations that encompass the, the thoroughbred industry. Just today, we got to come to um, Racing TV. Um, it's been you know been watching it since I can remember watching Racing TV, and uh, just to see it from behind the scenes mm. and. Uh, just to be on it, to be honest, it's, it's been a pleasure, and we get to see all these varied organisations that help make racing what it is. And so, is the is the idea that you will get to see maybe a little bit of everything, you know, various facets of the industry, and perhaps you might choose one to end up in? Is that the, the theory behind it? Yeah. So um, the the hope is that uh, the twelve will become future leaders of the thoroughbred industry, and uh, hopefully help it overcome its obstacles and for hopefully a continue um, help it have a sustainable uh, future because um, we, we're all here for the love of the horse and love of the sport um, so we all get to experience a variety of aspects um, of the thoroughbred industry and you just hope that each 12 of us find their niche and we can really hopefully instigate change and you know make racing one of the best sports for me it's been one of the best sports I've been part of and just help it continue to go in that upward trajectory. And so, so far, because you used to ride out, didn't you, while, yeah. you, while you were doing your degree? Yeah, so tell I, us um, about that. I rode out for Dean Ivory, mm -hmm. um, and before that, previously previous work for Carl Burke and Mick Appleby. But um, I was, my, my history, is, I was born in North London, so I'm not really a uh, horse, horsey area, uh, more urbanised. <laughs> yeah. um, but my dad used to take me to Epsom to watch the Derby. I remember the likes of Galileo, of course, wow. Sir Percy. <laughs> Um, and uh, I just fell in love with the sport and when I was 21 I decided to go to Northern Racing College to learn to ride. It was the first time I ever seen horses, touched horses. Learned to ride when I was 21 and I've been in racing ever since and um, decided to get my degree because um, my goal was to get onto this Fly and Start program and I think the opportunity in racing is incredible. You know? so, so, what, so far, I mean how, how 
early are you into the course? Uh, we started August 19th and we're the first, uh, first years and the second years um, are in Australia. First mm. years have finished the first phase in Ireland and are currently in the second phase in Newmarket. Um, we've been on it since August. Is everybody in the 20s or are there yeah, about? thereabouts? Yeah, thereabouts, mid 20s. You, you know, you need like a, at least five years experience with uh, thoroughbreds. Um, okay. and, but we all have a variety of different experiences. Um, so, some people worked in studs, um, some people who work for like the BHA um, or racing. Um, so everyone's got like a variety of experience. So have you any idea what you'd like to go into yet or still too early? Um, yeah, to be honest, Martin, uh, initially I was quite co uh, confident I wanted to work for like an organisation like the BHA just because I think if you want like change to happen you have to be in an organisation like that. But, um, you know, I think I find it difficult to say you know, sit in an office and say goodbye to the to the to the racehorse. I've loved working with them. Yeah, physically. She so want to be hands on. Yeah, so it'd be be tough to say goodbye. But um, Jamie goes through stuff quite quickly, so there might be a, a sport, <laughs> might be a sport or two coming up and by the no, time you. We don't go through stuff quickly, <laughs> but there is always room for a man like this. Oh, I'm feeling highly <laughs> inadequate now. Do, oh, do, you, know what, do you know what I'm already thinking of? It? You or you've been on here four and a half yeah. minutes. You already speak better than Dwyer. There might be. <laughs> Yeah, well, there might be an opportunity on the Friday club coming up. Oh, no, we'd <laughs> so love to. What's love interested you the most then? Um, oh, it's tough to say because uh, there's so many brilliant aspects that you, we yeah. get to see almost absolutely everything that the thoroughbred industry has to offer. And um, that, like you, everybody knows, that there's so much uh, opportunity out in racing to do sure. a variety of things like media, like working hands on with the horses, like regulations. But it's, it's tough to pinpoint one. Um, it's not hard to be a trainer, you know. <laughs> it's hard to win the good races. Though. Fair, but do you really actually, do you, Jamie, do you think, because that's the interesting thing about it. I mean, it's the sport of kings, but actually racing, would you say it is oh. one of the sports where you, you can go from zero to hero? Whoever said it way. was the sport of kings is talking absolute rubbish. I mean, this is the most inclusive sport, mm. I would imagine, of any. Yeah. There are no barriers. And I mean, this man is proving now that, I mean, you know, the way you've just spoken about the sport that we love, you know, is inspirational. And I think, you know, you are not going to lack for a job when you've finished there's, your course. Yeah, there's no, and, there's, uh, no, there's no guaranteed job as such at the end. At no, the end no, but um, the, the, the idea is you network and you meet, sure. you know, the great people that, um, that are within the, uh, the thoroughbred industry and hopefully, you, you know, you, you find your niche, what your strengths lie to and you, you can uh, network and make a connection.